this is Renault Anjoran from Sophist, and I'm going to go over the requirements related to plastic enclosures in the IEC 62368-1 standard. Okay, again, it's only about plastic enclosures to keep things simple. First, we are not lawyers or consultants here, so make sure you read the standard, make sure you work with professionals if you are not already trained in this topic. So let's go straight into a few basic concepts. An enclosure is a casing or a housing of a product, right? It can also be that of a battery, for example. We'll get into that. So the IEC standard has this basic sort of model. So there's an energy source in the product. The product might get very hot or there might be um, uh, live wires that can give an electrical shock or it could start a fire, it could explode, and so on and so forth. Well, it's important to have safeguards, and the standard goes to great lengths to explain what types of standards in what, uh, what situations. Okay, For example, if inside there's a pot that gets very hot, there needs to be some kind of thermal insulation. Um, in many cases, it's solid, a uh, solid sheet of plastic. Okay, but it could be many other things. And, and this safeguard prevents this energy source, for example, the very high heat, from harming the body, maybe the body of the user, for example. Okay, so uh, it's a very important concept. It's a safeguard. And it's very important also to understand an enclosure protects the people and the surroundings, let's say, uh, surroundings of the product, from the energy inside the product. And that's what I just explained before, but it also prevents uh, the surroundings, for example, the environment, kids, uh, animals, etc., etc., from actually accessing or damaging the internal parts or, or interfering in certain ways that can cause a non desirable situation that can lead to safety hazards. Okay, so. Here, an enclosure, so there's a lot of things about uh, fire enclosures, okay, in the standard. This paragraph here is very important uh, because a lot of products now have uh, batteries based on lithium, okay. And here specifically is about secondary batteries, mean, meaning recha rechargeable batteries based on lithium. Okay, they should be provided with a fire enclosure, it's a must. Fire enclosure is a must-have uh, safeguard okay and they, here they say the fire enclosure maybe the enclosure of the battery itself so for example something around the, the cells or the pack of the battery okay or it can be that of the equipment containing the battery so typically the the product for example okay uh, so different situations the enclosure can be around the battery it can be around the product okay or you could have both but at least you need to have at least one fire enclosure around the, the batteries or around the whole product okay if it's part of the end product there are certain requirements that apply if it's part of the battery itself uh, around the cells for uh, le let's say to, to simplify there are some uh, test requirements in clause s1 in annex a, annex s uh, or well for example if it's non-combustible material there's no need to test, right? Because the, the material anyway would not get on fire. Or uh, it has to be at least class V1, and we'll get to that. Here in another part of the standard, they, they give some examples of non-combustible material, right? Metal, glass, ceramic, etc. But here in this video, I mentioned we only look at uh, plastic enclosures. Okay, so this, this is not the case. And very often what we need to look at is this uh, this this um, this class okay? And uh, what does that mean? Well, there's there's a couple of standards uh, that are aligned in my understanding on this topic, and it goes from less protection with the HB uh, class all the way to 5V, which is more protective, much harder to uh, to be deformed or even to catch fire. Okay, and what they uh, usually uh, specify as the minimum is V1 or V0 and so on, right? Or, or better, okay? And these kind of things, 
It's possible to know about it if you know exactly what kind of plastic polymer and also what, what uh, proportion of regrinded material is used. Okay, and by the way, it should conserve this property for the full length of the product, <laughs> not just at the time of production, which is not always the case. So why is it so important to, uh, to talk so much about flammability? Well, these are some uh, findings from Google Image Search. So you have a laptop here, some examples. Something went wrong, right? Maybe the battery, okay, but the enclosure uh, contained it. Now this is an aluminum enclosure. Okay, these are some printers. Maybe uh, the enclosure did not contain it so well in this case. Uh, this is a plastic enclosure of um, um, some, some earbuds. Okay, this, this is the enclosure and it has to contain what might go wrong. Okay, and these, these are examples of phones. Okay, so uh, something went wrong here. Maybe uh, suddenly some kind of explosion or, or just a sudden uh, and, and very strong discharge of energy and, and, and fire of the battery. Okay, we don't really know. Now, there's a lot of uh, requirements in the standard. Just to give you a taste about that, the, the standard requires you to think of the different orientations in which the product might be placed, okay, and then it makes a difference between the top, the side, and the bottom, okay. Uh, so if it's if there's less of a, less than a five degree angle here, okay, this is still considered the side. However, if it's more than five degree, well, this part here is part of the top, okay, which is uh, not very <laughs> intuitive, maybe. But why is it so important? Well, something might fall into it. Okay, there's some openings, right? And then there's some requirements about openings, uh, the, the size of the openings in, in certain cases in the standard. Well, certain things might fall into the internal part of the product and might, for example, touch some live wires, start to short or, or, or anything that we can, we can imagine, right? Or something uh, actually very hot might might fall into it. Okay, so it something from inside might damage things and lead to a very undesirable situation inside the enclosure. Okay, but also if something goes wrong inside the enclosure and it starts, for example, there's a fire inside. Well, some of the materials, maybe very hot or on fire, might fall also from here, which is the bottom of the enclosure and maybe put fire to some other uh, products, for example, outside, okay? So this is an example, give you a taste. Uh, there's a lot of um, lot of things in this standard on this topic, and I cannot cover everything in this short video. Uh, this is a special case about the outdoor products. Okay, if it's outdoor, well, is it going to be uh, degraded very fast by the UV light from the sun or corrosion from... Uh, typically from rain, but also is it going to protect the internal parts, okay? Ingress protection of, um, of dust, of uh, water, okay, but also um, are there going to be some, some, some bugs uh, going into it or plants going into it and, and growing or, or who knows what, okay? And also the, the standard specifies some tests, uh, for example, impact, uh, impact tests, okay, and specifies the, the requirements. Now, just a quick overview quickly uh, of some of the important uh, sections of the standard in Annex S. So there are several descriptions of uh, flammability tests, okay, in different, uh, different situations. Annex V is about the accessible parts. So an enclosure is suppo supposed to prevent certain things from happening. And here you can see surfaces and openings tested with jointed test probes. Well, here's an example right here where they, they, they specify the use of something that looks like the finger of a child trying to go through an opening. And maybe here there's something that might provide an electrical shock, uh, an energy source of class 2 of class 3. And if there's not enough air gap here, then there's not enough insulation. Okay, it's not sufficient. So this is just an example. The, the design of the enclosure is extremely important in many ways. Annex Y uh, is about uh, outdoor enclosures, so this is 
the kind of things that I mentioned, but there's much more to it, and it keeps going and it keeps going, and then it, it specifies some um, physical tests on the enclosure. So I'm not going to go into all these details. You can uh, grab the standard and read through it in detail. And that's it for today. Again, this was only about plastic enclosures. For example, when you look at metal enclosures for electrical shock, for example, you, you, you look at whether it is connected to a protective earth. You don't have to worry so much about flammability because it is considered impossible to, to catch fire in many cases anyway, and so on and so forth. So that's it. I hope this was helpful. Thank you.